Hi everyone, Dawn Fisher, Morning Glory Needleworks. Welcome to Floss Tube number 43. Um, as always, thank you to everybody who uh, has subscribed, commented, liked my channel. Um, I'm going to go over my little beginning blurb. Um, as always, uh, I have a lot of links listed um, in the description part of um, the video, right underneath the video where you can comment. I break my videos into chapters, so you can, um, if you just want to go to Stitch of the Month, or if there's something specific you want to hear about, you can go straight to that chapter. Um, just click on the timestamp, and it will take you uh, directly there. There's also links to the Morning Glory Needleworks Etsy shop, uh, Instagram, which is MG Needleworks, the Stitch of the Month Facebook group, the Morning Glory Needleworks Facebook group, and other links. And if I talk about something that I think you might be interested in buying, the links are also there. And as always, I do not get compensated for any of these things I talk about. I just find them and I think um, I think you might enjoy them also. So it's the 1st of October, 2023. So let's get going here. Um, my life, my life, life update. It seems like um, there's nothing going on, but there is. There's a lot going on. It's it's weird. It's I've been really busy. Um, lots of stuff going on with the kitties and vets and ugh, sick and medications and all that stuff. But it's going. It's going. They're doing better. Um, I today I spent a fun day stitching with friends today and our group we call Library Stitch. Um, I've been working on my latest whip, so I can <clears throat> I'll show you that later. Uh, these are friends, some of them I've known since the 90s. I mean, we've been stitching together that long in different places all over at um uh, we were started at a shop and then we moved to another shop and then, you know, we became a sampler group. And then we um, went to uh, Cheryl Anderson, who um, kind of keeps us all together and going. She um, always finds somewhere for her to stitch. Right now we're at a library, so it's a lot of fun. And we get together once a month and just talk about everything that's going on in our lives or stitching um, our families, they've been through everything with me. Um, they've um, supported me through all of this, everybody. We have, like I said, people I've known since the 90s. And today we had some new people that came to stitch with us. So it's nice. There's a, a nice mix of of people. Also, um, my online EGA Star Spangled Sampler class, it's in the final stages. Lesson four just posted, so it's pretty much over with. Um, it will be up for a couple more months if you're um, taking the class. Thank you so much. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I've been working on my plans for the next couple of years. Um, kind of what's going on in my future now that other than I still have to sell my house, um, I can do stuff. I can plan ahead now to... Um, I'm going to go, uh, I've got, I don't know how many retreats scheduled for next year that I'm going to attend. Um, I'm sure more will come up. Um, I have a couple of classes scheduled next year that I'm teaching. Um, I've, um, I just signed up for the uh, EGA, Embroiderers Guild of America. If you're not a member, you should join. Um, I think it's egausa.org. It's what it is. It's Embroiderers Guild of America. So I just signed up for their 2024 EGA National Seminar in Atlanta. Um, I'm just going to be attending. I'm not teaching or anything. I'm going to be submitting proposals for future um, EGA seminars, um, and hopefully I'll be able to go teach. I have taught at regionals, but I'd love to teach at national. Um, the seminars in Atlanta, which is nice for me, being here in uh, Florida and St. Petersburg, it's it's a one day drive. It's not a bad drive. I can do it in one day. I've driven there before several times. So um, I usually um, EGA seminars usually five or six days. 
Um, and they have two day classes, they have one day classes, they have four day classes, um, but they've started something new um, next year. They have what's called stitch in time where you can just go and you pay a base fee and you can sit and stitch all day with other stitchers. Um, you don't have to take a class. Usually you had to sign up and take a class or whatever. And it, it gets a little pricey, but um, it's a it's it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Um, but this time I'm I'm taking a one day class. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. Um, just a fun one day class. And then I signed up for three days of stitching time. So I'm going to drive up one day, take my class, do some other things and sit and stitch and drive back the last day. Um, I've also signed up for teacher showcase. So if you plan on going, come up and say hi to me. I'll have um, my classes I'm teaching um, that I teach and other information. I will have that available there. Um, this year, they're going to be doing something a little different. Usually they have a merchandise night. And for two hours on one night, this big room opens up and the vendors are in there. Well, it's crazy. Um, they usually have a store also set up. I don't know if they're going to do that next year or not, but um, I mean, it's a madhouse for two hours of people just rushing in. And if you're there by yourself, like me, I usually am by myself. Um, it's just crazy. So this year they decided to do something different. They're going to, I'm, they don't have all the details down yet, but I've, I've requested information and told them I want to do this where they're gonna have um, like pop-up boutiques. Each day they'll have different vendors. So it won't be so crazy. So I, I'm hoping to be able to do that. So that'll pay for um, my gas up and maybe part of the hotel because they always have it at a really nice hotel. So it gets a little pricey. Um, I usually share a room with somebody. It's funny how people don't wanna go to seminars by themselves or retreats. And you meet so many people. And I have gone to so many of these retreats, uh, especially like EGA seminars, because they are pricey. And you're usually, I think this one's at a Hilton, which is great because they're wonderful, um, but they are expensive. And if you're there for six or seven nights or five nights, whatever, it gets it gets to be a lot of money. So um, I I find a roommate and most of the time it's somebody I've never met. I've never had a bad experience with it. Um, I mean, we're all stitchers. Um, it's just, you know, you're not in the room that much. So it's kind of fun. And like this time, the stitching room is going to be open from, um, I think like from eight in the morning till 10 at night. So you don't have to be in the room at all. So anyway, that's one of the things I'm looking forward to. So um I'm kind of excited about that. And like I said, my calendar's filling up for next year. I have, I don't know how many retreats, probably six, six retreats already or seminars that I've signed up for for next year. Plus, like I said, a couple of teaching classes. Um, and I'm going to be sending out proposals to other seminars and guilds and things. So um, if you want me to come teach, I would love to come teach for you. You can contact me, email me, dawn at morning, morningglorynedleworks.com. There's a link down in the description. And I can tell me what you're interested in. I teach half-day classes. I teach one-day, two-day classes. I have a a new sampler coming. I'm not, I'm, it may even be as much as a four-day, which would be like a national seminar type thing. But anyway, um, I haven't quite figured that one out yet. But um, I'd love to come teach. I prefer to teach in person. It's it's much more fun and it's more personal to where you're interacting with people and I walk around and I can help you and talk to you and that kind of stuff. But if you're a small group and um, when, um, when I go teach somewhere, they usually pay travel expenses and that kind of stuff. So um, if you're a smaller group or if you have friends all over the country, you want to get together, I do teach over Zoom also. I've done that quite a bit. It's been very successful. Everybody enjoys it. So again, 
just contact me soon because my calendar is filling up, which I'm very excited about. So next, as I mentioned, I talked about it last time that I'm I'm teaching grandma's button box in just actually just a few days. I'm really excited getting ready for that. I shipped all the kits off. Um, oh, I have a visitor, Buster. Come here. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to edit out chasing the big fat kitty down. <laughs> I have the office door open. I do that now. But um, so this is my big giant boy. This is Mr. Buster. Can you say hi. This is my big giant Buster. He's a monster. He's going to the vet Monday, so I'll find out what he weighs. But I know he weighs a ton. He's a good boy. So I have him and Alphaba and Mama Kitty, which is his mama. Mama Kitty just weighed in at five and a half pounds. Bye, Bust. Um, when we went to the vet. So <laughs> I don't know what he's going to weigh in at, but he's he's huge. So, but he's my big buster. Um, so <laughs> anyway, enough about cats. Um, they're like my kids. So anyway, as I mentioned, um, I've been working on uh, Grandma's Button Box because Whitman's uh, chocolates, they changed the style box they used. I don't think I have an empty box sitting here, but so let me show you. This is the original button box. Now, if you watched last time, I, sh I talked about this. I was working on the banding and you can see it's got this lip on it. So you can see on the bottom, there's a lip this one's had some abuse because it travels a lot. So anyway, this is the original grandma's button box. Well, um, Whitman's decided to change their box. I'm sure um, it's a cost cutting thing. They went from 12 ounces to 10 ounces, but it's the same size box. Imagine that. So anyway, but this is a Whitman's chocolate box. So this is the original button box. And because they changed it, I had to redo this. So this is, see, it no longer has a lip. Um, you can see this has stuff in it. So you can see the difference. So anyway, and as I talked about last time, I had restitched the band, but didn't take into consideration that this box is wider than this box. You can see how this dents in about a quarter of an inch. So anyway, I had to restitch the banding, but I got it done and I, I like the way it turned out. I like the way it looks. Um, these are still buttons from my grandma's button box. So anyway, but I restitched it. The bottom of the box looks a little different now, but um, so this is what I will be teaching in uh, Branson, Missouri next weekend. So if you want me to come teach this for you, I am definitely available. So um, anyway, I've been working on kits. I finally got them all shipped off, but these kits are pretty um, pretty complicated. They they have a lot of um, a lot of uh, moving parts, shall we say? They have um, sorry, I had something come up on my screen. They have um, of course. Here's all the buttons. Four different bags of buttons with different sizes. Some have two holes. Some have four holes all the floss, eight, eight, um, um, eight spools of sulky 12 weight, the banding, you get a yard of banding, there's linen, there's batting, there's a piece of foam core. And because, because the box changed, I had to write more instructions. Um, the people taking the kit will get instructions on how to finish both style boxes because some people in the class have the old style some people have the new style so i had to rewrite or add to my directions and change some stuff around but anyway it's been um that's what i've been working on Pack, oops yikes i dropped something packing things up and getting them sent off i sent off a huge box of kits 23 pounds big huge box for all the kits for the class and a couple extras. So anyway, um, I spent like a whole night or two 
messing with buttons, sizing buttons, dividing them up. Um, I have a little uh, chart I use, which shows me the different size buttons I need so I can lay the buttons on it. Anyway, it was a, it's fun, but it's a lot of work, but I, I enjoy it. I like, um, I like playing with all the buttons. I keep finding really cool buttons in there. So, and I always try and give everybody in the class some kind of a special button. Um, this time, I think I had a lot of China buttons, um, which are, um, they're, they're little, they're called China buttons. I think this one, I even have a calico button on it. This was, um, again, from my grandma's button box. I don't give anybody else buttons from my grandma's button box. But um, anyway, it's, it's a lot of work, but I just listen to my audio books and cut up 40 pieces of linen. Actually, I cut like, I just, I had three yards of linen and I cut it all up. So anyway, um, I'm going to talk about uh, the class and all the fun we're going to have at this retreat. Um, I'm going to talk about that in the next um, floss tube. So be sure to uh, tune in for that. So next. Now, enough about button boxes. I have a last time I had talked about three new treasures that I got and I talked about the scissors that I loved and I used them today and oh my God, they're they're fabulous. So anyway, but I have one more fun treasure to share with you that um, I found, I think I found it on Instagram. It came up in my feed and she was selling these on Etsy, not these, but if you use scroll rods like I do, a lot of us use these, um, I don't know what they're called. We used to hook our mittens to our our jackets when we lived in Michigan when we were little kids. But these, you, um, your um, linen often gets loose, especially on the edges as you're working on the samplers. So you can use these to um, hook to your linen and you wrap this around your scroll rod and then attach the other side and it pulls it tight. Well, this woman, wonderful person, came up. I'm going to be showing you a whip here with these new, these are called, um, let's see, scroll rod sidebar sleeves. And then they have the, the clips attached right to the um, fabric. I bought two sets. She's got all sorts of fun fabric. Of course, I had to get stitchy fabric. This is what they look like. You can see the fun, fun fabric, but it's got these clips on it. And you slide this over your scroll rod. These are, I think, for nine inch. You can see this. It just you can kind of scrunch it up. And then you clip it to your fabric and it holds your fabric taut. I have one on each end. This one has like spools and pins and other little stitches on it. But she has some other, she has plain fabrics and other ones with flowers, you know, other fabrics, but I got stitchy fabrics. So anyway, this is what they, how they hook. They just slide over your scroll rod. And then of course you put these, your rings on the end or your uh, nuts on the end. And then I kind of went into the fabric so it pulled tight and these can kind of stretch out depending on how much room you have on the sides but these have been a great help I just started using them today I've had them for a while but I didn't want to take my scroll rod apart until I was ready to move move the fabric because I I reached the end of the opening here so I highly recommend these these are by Trulin to stitching, all one word on Etsy. There is a link in my um down in the bottom in the description. There's a link to this on Etsy. These are um $9.95 a pair plus shipping. Um, so again, there you get two of them, one for each side. A lot of fun. I, I'm always up for new new things that makes my stitching easier especially um, instead of using these. And she also says in the description that they will work with um, Q-snaps, which I don't use. I have some, but I don't use them usually. So anyway, 
And um, while we're at it, this is my update on, on Trinidad Gonzales, the 1879 sampler I'm working on. You can see I've uh, scrolled it up. I'll probably turn it and get a little bit loose here so you can see it how much I can unscroll it with my clips on there. But this is um, this is some of the stitching. Again, this is all done in long arm cross stitch, which was last month's stitch of the month. I had to set this aside for a while because I was redoing the button box. So that was taking up all my time. But I'm over halfway done. So this is kind of the last really heavy section that's going to be here. It has flowers in each of those spots, which I think are kind of a peachy color, but it's a lot of fun. Pretty interesting. Um, it's I thought it'd be a lot more challenging to do all the long arm cross stitch, but once you get used to it, it's really not bad if you, if you, you don't have to think about it as much um, after you stitch this much of it. So, um, that is, um, that's it for my whip. And then um, once I'm done stitching the whole sampler, I mentioned before, this um, has a very unusual um, hem stitching that goes with it. The fabric is trimmed and folded to the front, which is very unusual. And then it is hem stitched using long arm cross. So it's it's a really unique sampler. I've not seen that before. So that's um, that's it for my whip. I'll keep showing you every time. Now this one's uh, today's gonna be short and sweet because I got a lot going on. Even though I say I don't, I don't even know. Anyway, but it's the first of the month, so it's time for a new stitch of the month because it's October. So here's the stitch of the month sampler. This is a new stitch. This is the long arm cross I was telling you about that this sampler is uh, made up of. But our stitch for um, October is rice stitch. Now this is rice stitch over four threads. This is a fairly simple stitch and because it's over four threads, it's not as dense or complicated. Um, I did it in two shades of pink. See it down here at the bottom. I don't know if I can get it close enough to where you can really see it. The light is not good. Kind of shaded there. But anyway, I did it in the darkest pink and the light pink. Of course, I'm working in sulky. Use whatever colors you want. This is just um, for you to get to know some new stitches. So here is... This will be available on the Stitch of the Month um, Facebook group. I will be posting that um, when the video or when the, yeah, when the Floss Tube posts, usually after midnight on the first, I post, post this as a PDF. So you can download it and try the stitch. It's a lot of fun. Now I'm going to show you the PowerPoint. Like I always do, kind of go over the stitch and then I'll demonstrate it for you. So hang on while I um, bring up PowerPoint. Okay, so here I am back again. Now this is the actual diagram you will get when you download um, the Stitch of the Month. So I'm just gonna kind of go over it. I have instructions here. Again, I work this in two colors. You do not have to. This can be worked all in one color. It's very pretty, especially if you use um, like an over dyed or a variegated thread. It gives a nice effect, but it's a fairly simple stitch. Again, this is worked over four threads and there's just a row across um, the width of the sampler. So um, first you come up at one, which is six threads below the previous band, you count over two, over four threads to the right and up four threads and go down at two. And then you come up at three, which is four threads to the right of one and go down at four. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna work, because this is two different colors, we're gonna work all the cross stitches over four across the row. And just follow the numbering 
on the diagram and work all your stitches across the row, the cross stitches. Then you're going to come back and we're going to work the gray stitches with the uh, capital letters on them. So you're going to come up at A. These are the corners. Um, you're going to come up at A, which is two threads to the right of step four, or right in the middle. And you're going to go down at B, which is two threads below step four. You're going to go straight across. Now, when I work this, all the stitches of the corners are worked horizontally and vertically across the back. So A, B, go horizontally over to two threads below step two and come up at C and then go down at D, which shares a hole with step A. Then you're going to go straight down four threads and come up at E, which is two threads to the left of step three and go down at F, which shares a hole with C. Then you're gonna go straight across horizontally again, come up at G, which shares a hole with step B, and then go down at H, which shares a hole with E, step E. And to me, going horizontally and vertically across the back always um, makes your stitches more consistent. You don't have to do it that way. That's just, that's the way I learned it. And I think it, it gives you a more, uh, just the pull on the stitches, the way they they pull when you, um, how the stitches go down under the fabric. It just looks better if you're consistent all the way across. So now I'm gonna go to my, um, my canvas here, my plastic canvas and my camera, and I will demonstrate the stitch for you. So hang on and let's go do that. Okay, so here we are. Come up here, whoops, actually I'm going down. So let me get somewhere. So I'm gonna come up here, there we are. Let me zoom in, move my chair out of the way. I wanna zoom in just a little bit more. It looked like enough when I, oops when I set it up, but I like to make it, you know, as close as possible. There we go. Okay. So this would be step one. I've come up at step one. I'm going to count four threads to the right and then up four threads. That is step two. So you can see this is a big stitch. Of course, yours will cover more because this is um, a large count canvas here. So this is step three, which is four threads below two. And then I'm gonna go down at step four, which is um, four threads above step one. So there's one cross stitch. Now I'm just gonna continue across and do a couple of these so I can show you how to do the, um, the corners. So there's a couple of uh, stitches. Get one more. I don't know if I'll, I'll do all these or not. But so you can see, so you just work all the way across the row. Now, if your floss is not over dyed, you can do it like a regular cross stitch. You can go do your half and then come back, whatever you want. But when you get to the end of the row and your thread, and now I'm going to I have needles everywhere. There, I'm going to do the corners. So I'm gonna come up at A, which is right in the middle between step four and two. You see coming up right there. So this is A, and then I'm gonna go down at B, which is right in between steps one and four. I'm gonna go horizontally across, come up at C and go down at D. Then I'm gonna go straight down into the middle on the bottom. This is E, F, and then go horizontally across to G, H. Okay, so there is one rice stitch. 
then you just continue across the row. So your next stitch is up here between, that would be step six and eight. And you're gonna go horizontally across the back. That's C, D. You're gonna go uh, vertical, E, F. And then horizontally across the back, G, H. And there is your rice stitch. If we can Trying to turn on a, a try and make it a little bit brighter here. Let me. My mouse is not cooperating. There it is. I was going to zoom in a little bit more so you could see it a little better. So there you go. So this one's coming loose here, but um, there is right stitch over four. So anytime you have a row of four cross stitches, you can do a uh, right stitch in its place. Like I said, I did this in the light pink and the dark pink. Um, I did the light, the dark pink as the base and then the light pink as the corners. When I stitched mine, you can use any colors you want. So here I am back again. Again, this is a stitch. This will be available in the Facebook Stitch of the Month group. Um, so try it out. Let me know what you think. Um, like I said, it's a fun stitch. I use it quite a bit in a lot of my um, band samplers, samplers I design. You could use it as fence or grass or something as long as you have um, an area four by four. This can also be done over two threads. So you would just work the cross stitch over two and then work your corner stitches over one. That's a very tight, dense stitch but it, um, it gives a lot of texture and detail. I use it a lot on roofs, um, dresses, um, on the, my Martha Washington. I think I did her dress, her brocade dress in um, rice stitch. Um, and it, it gives it um, texture. So it looks like it's um, alive or whatever. It gives it depth. So... That's it for Floss Tube 43. Again, thank you for watching. Um, thank you for subscribing, commenting. Um, so be sure to subscribe so you get notified when the next video posts. Um, share your photos on the Stitch of the Month Facebook group um, and your progress for those of you working on a stitch a day. Be sure to show your progress in the uh, Facebook group. Let me know any stitches you want to learn. Um, usually I show an antique sewing item or something. Um, I, I didn't have time today because of everything else I, I had going on today. But any sewing items you want to hear about, next time I'll probably show an antique sampler again. And again, all the links for everything I talk about are posted in the description area. On for this floss tube. So I will see you again on the 15th of October. And thank you again for watching.